Hello. Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm your host, Megan. I'm Hannah. And today is our second week of spooky. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's the best time of the year, it really is. Yes. Uh, so to lead off with that, um, we thought we'd tell you a cool story about when we were little. A cool, a cool <laughs> story. Yeah. I'm not really sure that that's what I would call it. Well, here's the thing. Uh, so when we were younger, um, we had where we would go out for Halloween. Uh, they We would take the four-wheeler, and usually our dad would drive. Um, and then we'd hook up the trailer to it, and we'd have just a whole neighborhood of kids piled on this thing. And um, on one of the Halloween nights... Uh, <laughs> My, I was sitting on the back of the trailer and my foot was like dragging on the ground and come to find out that's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, so the um, trailer ended up kind of slicing through the back of my leg on my calf muscle and it hurt. And she didn't say a damn word about it. Mm-mm. I wanted to finish trick-or-treating. <laughs> so she didn't tell anybody. <laughs> no. And I'm pretty sure, didn't I actually find, like, I think we got home and you went down to the bathroom and I, uh, like, came downstairs mm -hmm. and was going to talk to you. And when I saw you, there was blood. I was, like, dripping. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, <laughs> dripping everywhere. And she tattled. I, yeah. <laughs> hey. You told them in Florida when I had appendicitis and I didn't say a damn word. Yeah. So you did the same thing. You got me back. So um, I got to go to the hospital and get stitches on Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I'm sure that my parents were pleased about that. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm guessing they loved it. Yeah. But I mean, it had sliced through a long time before it was even brought up. And I just kept powering through the whole night. Well, I mean, we made it. She made it to the end of the night, too, because uh -huh. it was once we got home from trick-or-treating that I came downstairs and saw that. I didn't even tell my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly we're the same in that way because, you know, mm -hmm. we just keep our mouth shut. We're like, we got this. Yeah. Power through it. Get that candy. We had to. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. When we were little... um. My friend and I would get, like, really intense about Halloween, and we would create, like, a map of which houses in the neighborhood gave the best candy. And which We ones. all knew. Yeah. And um, so we would, of course, hit them right away at the beginning of the night. Then, at the end of the night, when they would have forgotten about us, you we gotta would go back. circle back, do it all over again. But the best part is, too, is that especially, like, and that uh, neighborhood, as soon as it was kind of dying down for trick-or-treating, people would just give you handfuls at mm -hmm. the end of the night because they just wanted it gone at that point. Yeah, we would wait it out till all the little kids went to bed and we would go back out and then they'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe anyone's out here. And they would dump the whole buckets in our pillowcases and yep. then turn off their lights. <laughs> and I mean, we had multiple different neighborhoods we'd go to also mm -hmm. and there was this one neighborhood that legitimately gave out king size everything yeah and it was glorious um we didn't even know that was a thing at the time no <laughs> no we did not uh but it was awesome <laughs> and my neighbor one time forgot to get candy so she handed out quarters all night <laughs> hey, whatever works you remember man. when she did that i don't recall that actually <laughs> yeah she, they forgot entirely, and so she just uh, handed out quarters for, like, a good couple of hours and then shut her lights off and called it good. I don't know where or why they had so many quarters, but... That's an expensive Halloween. I know. I mean, I would have just gotten in the car and gone and got the candy. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, what do I know? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so before we jump into our story today, I do want to mention that um, we did get another review, and it's from Pam, and she says, five stars. So thank you, Pam. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> I uh, love you. Yes. 
And then um, today's story is going to be the Winchester Mystery House. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> yeah, it has been really interesting um, looking into this one. Like, obviously, I knew about it, but I've never been there. So it was really different to kind of hear the actual story on it. Um, okay, so with this one, we'll start with a little bit of background before we get to the house. So Sarah Lockwood Pardee was born in New Haven, Connecticut. Her father was a carriage manufacturer, and they were able to afford a private school education. By the time Sarah was a teenager, she spoke four languages, played piano, and she earned the nickname Belle of New Haven. She eventually fell in love with a man named William Wart Winchester. William's father, Oliver Winchester, was known for manufacturing and marketing the Winchester repeating rifle. Essentially, Oliver saw a chance to improve rifles and produce guns that could quickly and easily reload and fire. He helped to create the first true repeating rifle. In 1862, William and Sarah were married, and they had a daughter named Annie. Unfortunately, things did not go well with Annie. She had marasmus, which is severe malnutrition, and her body wasted away, and then she died. Okay, that's awful. Yeah. The loss of Annie ended up destroying Sarah, and she had a complete breakdown that she just couldn't recover from. In 1881, William ended up passing away from pulmonary tuberculosis, and Sarah was left all alone. Boy, none of the deaths so far have uh, been great. <laughs> none of them are natural causes. They all sound horrible. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Mm -mm. So obviously Sarah is devastated by the loss of her husband. So a friend of hers was like, hmm, I wonder how we could make this better. Oh, I know. Why don't you consult a spiritualist medium to talk to his spirit? Sarah was into this idea. So she goes to this medium and was totally under their spell. The medium explained to Sarah that a curse had been placed upon their family. They tell her that according to the spirit of William Winchester, it was in payment for the many thousand deaths caused by the family company's weapon. Sarah is, of course, terrified by this information. She was told that to escape the spirit's wrath, she would need to sell her New Haven home and start over with a new home for herself and the restless dead out west. Okay, cool. So Sarah just simply needs to build a new home for her and the restless dead. No biggie, right? But there's a catch. She can never finish building the home if she didn't want the vengeful dead to harm her. <laughs> well, keep building. <laughs> Forever. 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 <laughs> In 1884, Sarah found the ideal spot for her ever-expanding mansion in San Jose, California. Sarah didn't just want this new place to be a mansion. No, she was going to design a maze. There were no official blueprints drawn up, and no architectural vision was created. She hired local craftsmen to build, demolish, and rebuild the home. And this started in 1886. Sarah took the warnings from the medium very seriously. Her home's constant renovations and maze-like design would help her escape the vengeful spirits of people that were killed by the Winchester rifles. This put her in a life of seclusion, and she wore a dark veil over her face and even had a hedge that hid her home from view. Even though Sarah lived a lonely life, it wasn't all bad. She found out that she actually had a real knack for design. Every morning, Sarah would meet up with John Hansen, 
This was the guy who would oversee the construction on her home. They would go over the new additions, and Sarah usually had them sketched out on napkins or spare paper. The crew that was hired for the renovations worked around the clock. Sarah's share of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company amounted to $20 million, 50% ownership in the company, and an income of about $1,000 per day. I always just like think, how the fuck are you going to sleep when <laughs> your house is constantly under construction? Oh, for real. Yeah. With all that noise, yeah. not going to happen. I just need a fan. And even if I'm like way far away from it and I can barely hear it, it's still going to bother me. I'm still going to hear it to an extent. Like, yeah. there's no way. And having people go in and out of your house? No, you got to lock that shit down at night. It's not safe. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. So with the money, uh, the inflation calculator actually estimates that uh, her $1,000 a day budget would be over $30,000 a day in 2020. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I wish I had that. Yeah, that'd be nice. Boy, that'd be great. Yeah. So since there weren't any real blueprints, the house wasn't necessarily structurally sound when it was built. Rooms were added onto exterior walls, resulting in windows that overlooked other bedrooms. Multiple staircases were added, and they were all different sizes and tended to look distorted. The staircases would ascend several levels, then abruptly end. Doors open to solid walls and hallways would turn a corner and hit a dead end. When the house was being built, Sarah insisted that it must be built exclusively out of redwood. She ended up not liking the look of the wood and needed it to be covered up with a stain and a faux grain. It took over 20,000 gallons of paint to Whoa. cover up the wood. That <laughs> yeah. is a lot of paint. <laughs> it is. But I think it fit her budget. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Um, gold and silver chandeliers hung from the ceilings, and Sarah obtained a window that was intended to create a prismatic rainbow effect on the floor when the light flowed through it. But the window ended up being used on an interior wall instead. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. It would be super cool. I know. I would love to have something like that. That would be really cool. Yeah, we should look into that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There were 13 bathrooms in the house but only one was actually functional. This was to confuse any ghosts that maybe wanted to haunt a spigot. Yeah, but why can't more than one be functional? Like, you literally have this ginormous fucking house. Mm -hmm. What if I need to take a piss and I'm all the way across the house and then you have to go up some random ass staircases and run into some walls and... Maybe fall in a couple holes and open doors that don't even have rooms. Yeah. Just to I, not even have bathrooms that are functioning all over the house. Honestly, like, you and I wouldn't have been able to be there on the work crew because we have baby bladders. Yeah, I would have peed my pants by the time I got For there. For sure. Like, where is the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, it's bad. Yeah. It really is. Um. So Sarah also attempted to confuse the ghosts by sleeping in a different room every night. It confused me. Yes. And she used secret passageways to move from room to room so they wouldn't follow her. Oh, I actually didn't know that. <laughs> the house was obviously quirky, and the Winchester Mansion was dubbed the House Built by the Spirits. <laughs> in 1897, Sarah's mother-in-law passed away. Sarah's wealth suddenly grew significantly. Because, you know, she wasn't wealthy enough. She needed it. Now, there was no budget, deadline, or limit to the pay rates. I'm sure the crew for her, you know, that was, like, working there was probably like, um, 
fuck yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we know we can't get to any bathrooms around here, but we're making mad money, so why not? Yeah, do it. Now, anything that Sarah dreamt up could be built. The house began to grow rapidly, and there were 200 rooms. Suddenly, rooms turned into wings and levels turned into towers. By 1906, the mansion was seven stories with countless fireplaces, staircases, skylights, trap doors, and spy holes. Okay, but like, what if you just set your car keys down and then you have to go through 200 damn rooms just to find them? <laughs> that would be so awful. Yeah. I lose things so much. There's just absolutely no way. Wait, didn't they move around by horse? Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what if you set your horse reins down somewhere? Oh, yeah, you just bring those in the house. Well, okay. Th there okay, was a stable okay. inside. Okay, yeah. Okay. Whatever. We haven't gotten to that part. Hey, fine. So right now, we know this mansion is massive. In 1906, the top three floors of the Winchester Mansion were knocked off by the 8.3 San Francisco earthquake. Sarah was sleeping in a room that was called the Daisy Room. During the earthquake, the fireplace shifted, and this trapped Sarah for hours, and her servants had to use a crowbar to get her out. Sarah was traumatized by this event. Damn spirits. Well, she was convinced <laughs> that the vengeful spirits <laughs> used the earthquake as a way to tell her to start all over again. Oh, man. <laughs> the work crew repaired the structural damage, and Sarah boarded up the front 30 rooms of the house, including the Daisy Room. Experts have estimated that the Winchester home had about 600 rooms that were designed and built over time. Wow. The rooms were built, torn down, and rebuilt. At this time, only 160 rooms remain. Sarah incorporated many intricate details, many of which have hidden meanings. Unfortunately, we will never know the meanings uh, because she was never interviewed and didn't leave anything behind like a journal. Which so sucks. Yeah, I would have absolutely loved to see the thought process. Oh my gosh, it would be amazing. Throughout the house, the number 13 repeats often. The number 13 is seen in the number of panels on most walls, sections in most flooring, and the panes in the glass. There are 13 bathrooms, 13 steps on the stairs leading to the 13th bathroom, and 13 wall panels in the room preceding the 13th bathroom. The carriage entrance hall is divided into 13 sections, and there are 13 rails by the floor level skylight, 13 squares on each side of the elevator, 13 holes in the sink drain covers, and 13 gas jets on the ballroom chandelier. There are even 13 hooks for the 13 robes Sarah had for her nightly seances. <laughs> if this doesn't convince you that she had an odd connection to the number 13, she also had 13 sections in her will, and she signed it 13 times. Oh, man. <laughs> there are reports that Sarah actually did like the good spirits, and she welcomed them into her home. She knew that they did not like mirrors because they can't cast a reflection and they vanish when they look into one. To make the spirits happy, Sarah only had three mirrors in the house and the servants were forced to carry pocket mirrors. She also had dinner parties for the spirits and they would be served on gold plates. Oh, that's <laughs> different. Yes. There were some interesting rumors that popped up about this too. The servants often claimed that Sarah could walk through solid walls and unopened doors and would often disappear and reappear all throughout the house. Probably because she had so many damn trap doors in there. True. And they didn't know where they were. <laughs> yeah. 
When Sarah believed that an evil spirit was following her, she would press a button and disappear into a wall where she would walk down a flight of stairs and back up or into another room completely. The spirits didn't want to become trapped in the maze and they would stop following her when she would do this. I wouldn't want to be trapped in the maze either. No. (laughs) Another thing that Sarah was known for was her amazing memory. Now, see, she wouldn't lose her stuff, Hannah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you know what? So she knew the location of every item in her estate and kept track of everything down to the last screw. That's definitely not me. (laughs) There is a story about a workman that was asked to repair a gate at her home. He did this using six colored screws from a storeroom. Later, Sarah discovered that the screws were missing and confronted the worker about this. She said they were gold-plated screws and they were being saved for something special. They should have used something cheaper to fix that gate. I would never in a million years know if six screws went missing from my home. I didn't know there was a such thing as gold-plated screws, so... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're not on that level. (laughs) So... Throughout the years, many people worked on Sarah's home, and she liked to test their loyalty. One time, she asked a painter to paint the walls and the ceiling of a room with red enamel. Three days later, she wanted him to repaint it all white. When she was trying to decide between three applicants to hire as her new gardener, she asked them all to plant the cabbage upside down. One guy did. The next guy refused. And the third guy said, Well, I'll do it, but I suggest that you plant them the normal way. She gave the third guy the job for standing up to her, but understanding who the boss is. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that I'd be pissed if someone had me paint a a, uh, room and then repaint it a couple days later. I'm going to be real pissed. Yeah, but that's what her house is all about. Yeah, but (laughs) you're building, you're not repainting shit over and over comes with the territory they (laughs) repainted the redwood too so well that's true there is a grand ballroom that was built with almost no nails and has tiffany glass windows that were custom designed with shakespeare quotes many windows featured spider webs and daisies but there's no record of the connection that sarah made may have had to these things maybe it was something she liked or a possible hidden meaning Sarah also named the estate Lanada Villa, which means house on flat land. I mean, it was kind of fancy sounding. It is. <laughs> I probably said it wrong, but... <laughs> I don't know. I kind of liked it. <laughs> Whatevs. <laughs> the renovations stopped on the Winchester home in 1922 when Sarah passed away in her sleep from heart failure. The land and buildings were sold and ended up being restored as a tourist destination. Oddly enough, the mansion has been in a state of renewal similar to the way it was in Sarah's lifetime. Keeping up with the restorations on the home has been difficult, as it requires materials like Tiffany glass or specific wall coverings. Most of Sarah's wealth was left to charity, and nothing, no, and anything... (laughs) that remained went to her niece. She gave over $2 million to the Winchester Fund, which was used for the treatment of tuberculosis. A theme park worker, John H. Brown, who designed roller coasters, bought the house. There are legends of hidden treasures and ghosts that have been discussed for many years after Sarah's death. Boy, there better be ghosts in there after all that. I'm just saying. (laughs) What, this wasn't weird enough for you? There better be fucking ghosts in there after she went through all of that. Yeah. Many visitors and supernatural investigators have reported chills, phantom footsteps, locked doorknobs turning, and mysterious lights. Maybe Sarah really did create a maze to trap the vengeful spirits. Throughout the many years of construction on the home, Sarah never confirmed that she was building a haunted house. (laughs) There were stories and rumors swirling around the town because the contractors working on the house reported that Sarah had daily seances with local mediums. They say she was trying to reach the good spirits. 
the good spirits were reportedly consulted to find out how to best appease the spirits whom she allegedly built the house for. The spirits were reportedly responsible for getting Sarah to add so many illogical additions to the house. The Winchester Mansion is an official Californian historical landmark, registered as a large, odd dwelling with an unknown number of rooms. Rooms have gone missing, and rooms are still being discovered. In 2016, a secret attic was discovered, and it had a pump organ, a Victorian-era couch, a sewing machine, and various paintings. A year later, rooms that were never open to the public before were finally put on display. It's mentioned that Sarah enjoyed the finest vintage wines and liquors. Hey! (laughs) We understand it. Yeah, we do. One night, she went to the wine cellar to get a special bottle, and she found a black handprint on the wall. She took this as a bad omen and had it boarded up. To this day. With all the liquor in it? Yes. (gasps) Everything inside. So to this day, the wine cellar is still missing in the house. Can you imagine how great that booze is now? Oh my gosh. All (gasps) aged. Mm. (laughs) Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So after researching the story, I went online and found out that you can do a virtual tour so hannah and i did (laughs) it was so badass too yeah i loved it um in case you do it just know it i think it was only like nine bucks but uh it's a little clunky Um, no i think that was just our internet no because it was doing it in the same spots when we watched it again so yeah it just i don't know they probably haven't had it up very long but it was cool it was still really cool so yeah. worth it mm-hmm. so here are the facts that we learned from the tour the house is a whopping twenty four thousand square feet the wheelbarrow ghost is one of the most popular ghost stories from the winchester house many employees and guests have seen a man working on the ballroom fireplace or pushing a wheelbarrow down a long corridor into the basement, which, uh, BT dubs, the basement looked scary as hell. So, so, so creepy. We both were like, no. (laughs) Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. I did not like it. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's super creepy and it's like, endless it just keeps going and going and going yeah it's super dark lots of long long corridors and hallways and then there's like this big fire thing in the middle a bunch of stuff i say nope yeah didn't love it um yeah okay so when sierra winchester originally purchased the land it had a two-story eight-bedroom farmhouse The eight rooms are located somewhere on the front of the house, but due to all the remodels, no one is quite sure where they are. Which I think is super cool. I think that's really crazy. So crazy that you built it so many times over that you can't even find the original Uh parts. But um, the original back porch stairs are actually built inside of the mansion now. The house has many posts. In the middle of the rooms that are upside down, the smallest cabinet in the house opens to a half inch of storage space. The largest (gasps) cabinet opens to the entire back side of the house. I have no idea why. Okay. (laughs) Why of anything in this place? That's valid. The two famous windows are located in the grand ballroom and have the uh, Shakespearean play quotes. So one says, wide, unclasp the tables of their thoughts. And the other says, these same thoughts people this little world. And I don't have a clue what that could mean. Okay, good. I'm sitting here like, I don't know how to respond to this because I really have no idea what I mean The look on your face was like pure (laughs) bewilderment. (laughs) So it was worth it. Yeah, nope. 
Um, Brain's not comprehending that. Like, on the Winchester site, they even say, like, we don't know what this means. (laughs) Oh, okay, cool. So it's not just us. No. Got it. After Sarah passed away in 1922, people were dying to get inside the house. Boy, that was terrible. Wording. People were dying. After she passed away, people were dying to get in the house. <laughs> no, uh, they unlocked a door in the ballroom and they discovered a concrete wall. Okay. <laughs> Why'd you just say it like that? I don't know. You weirdo? Just being a creep. Okay. So behind the wall, there was a safe. After opening the safe, they found another safe. Why am I not surprised? Inside the final safe, they found a lock of hair from Sarah's daughter and the obituaries from Sarah's daughter and husband. Oh. So pretty much she didn't give a shit about like her money or her possessions. She just cared about her family. That's adorable. Yeah. There is a staircase that's called the switchback staircase. It has 44 steps makes seven complete turns, and is a hundred feet long, but only leads to the second floor. (laughs) Legend has it that Sarah would ring the bell in her seance room every night at midnight to summon the spirits. They would give her instructions on designing her home, and she would ring the bell at 2 a.m. to release the spirits. There is only one way to enter the seance room, but three exits. One of the doors opens to an eight-foot drop into the kitchen sink on the first floor. Yep, which I'd probably (laughs) kill myself on. For sure. Whoops. I'd be in the kitchen sink so fast. But maybe this door was there for the spirits. Okay, but can can you imagine just being like super tired and like going in there? To do the seance. I was thinking, like, super drunk. Oh, that too. Well, then, you you know, you just you go to leave and take the wrong door, and now you're dead. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the third floor was devoted to the servants' quarters and storage. Guests and employees have reported hearing footsteps on this floor the most often. The third floor is reported as having the most paranormal activity. There's even a room that the employees try not to go into after dark. (laughs) Sarah loved gardening and had an 18-acre Victorian garden that went around the mansion. She also built two rooms in her house that was filled with plants. One of them was built with a watering system. The floorboards could be lifted up and plants were watered right on the metal lining below. The floor was slanted so the excess water can run into the drains. Which is absolutely bananas to me because I didn't even know they had anything like that at that point. It's genius. Yeah. Love it. One of the rooms has a window in the middle of the floor with a railing around it. Um, Hannah and I were like, we would kill ourselves on that for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would so, go right through it. So far... We're falling into the kitchen sink and we're falling through the floor. Um, (laughs) Oh, but there's more. (laughs) Wait, there's more. Uh, There are 2,000 doors in the mansion that we know of. And the house has a door to nowhere. The door opens up to a 13-foot drop outside. Yeah. We would die. You heard that right. Mm -hmm. 13 freaking foot drop. Yeah. and. That drop is the end of our story. <laughs> oh, that was smooth transition, man. I like that. Whoop, whoop. That was slick. Yeah. Yeah, no, I uh, I would love to go visit sometime and do a tour there. Oh, for sure. It would be so freaking cool. Yeah. We got to plan that. Okay. It's happening. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, come back next week for our next spooky story. Uh, if you want to buy us any tequilas, you can go over to drinkingthekoolaid.com. Kool-Aid's with a C. Subscribe on any of your podcast apps. Leave us a five-star review if you love us. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Um, bye. bye.